Kain. Good morning, guys. So our topic is all about transportation and assignment. So the objective of our report is first, structure linear programming problems for the transportation, transshipment, and assignment models. Second is, use the northwest corner and stepping stone methods. Number three, solve facility location and other application problems with transportation models. And lastly, solve the assignment problem with Hungarian model. Good morning! Before we start, let's take a look about transportation first. So what is transportation in layman's term? It is the action of transporting someone or something or the process of being transported. It has an enormous impact in society, indeed a big role in our daily lives, especially in business industry. Can we imagine our life without transportation? We cannot deny the fact that there are things we need that did not originally made and available where we stay. Can we imagine life without any necessity products we need in our daily life that doesn't manufactured in a place where we're in? Without transportation, it's hard for the business to achieve more successfully than in achieving success where there is transportation. And it's hard to competitively operate. And it's hard for them to reach a massive target market or in terms of distribution. But on the other hand, the more the scope of the business is wide, the more it increases the cost. How can we achieve the business main goal, less to cost but to maximize gaining profits? So this is the reason why we will tackle about methods or models of transportation, assignment, and transshipment. And first, I will discuss transportation model. Transportation model, it addresses the concept of moving a thing from one place to another without change. It assumes that any damage in route has negative consequences. So it's used to analyze transportation systems and find the most efficient route for resource allocation. And there are data elements required in this matter. First is the origin of supply. Origin of supply is the source or supply location in transportation. Next is the destination. A destination is a point of demand in transportation problem. And unit cost of shipping or per unit cost. So in this matter, what is its objective? It's aim to determine the amount of commodity to be transported from each destination so that the total transportation cost is minimum. Apparently, it gives us two ideas. First is to find optimum transportation and next is the cost of transportation to be minimized. At this point, let us find out first about finding out the optimum transportation schedule. In finding of minimum transportation schedule, we need to consider two. First, origin of transportation or the location which this shipment are dispatched. And second is to consider the destination of transportation. And then the second one is the cost of transportation to be minimized. So in this matter, there's only one thing that we need to consider and that is the unit transportation cost. It is the equals or the product of cost of transporting one unit of the consignment from one origin to a destination. Okay, we learned the objectives of this model. So now, where can we apply in real life? Or what is the application of transportation model in our real life situation? So first, it is used to compute routes in such a way to minimize transportation costs for finding out location of warehouses. And second, is it is used to find out locations of transportation corporation depots where insignificant total cost difference may not matter. Third, is to minimize shipping cost. It may be shipping costs from factories to warehouse or from warehouses to retail outlets. Fourth is to determine low-cost location. So maybe for new factory, warehouses, or it can be an office or any other outlet facility. And fifth is finding minimum cost production schedule. So now in here, we need to find the minimum cost production schedule that satisfies firm demand and production limitation. Aside from its application, 
Transportation models has also its characteristics. First is a product is to be transported from a number of sources to a number of destinations at the minimum possible cost. So the cost of distributing units from any particular source to any particular destination is directly proportional to the number of units being distributed and this cost is just the unit cost of distribution times the number of units distributed. Okay? So, second is each source is able to supply a fixed number of units of the product and each destination has a fixed demand for the product. Okay, so in this matter, this implies that each source has a fixed supply of units where this entire supply must be distributed to the destination. On the other hand, each destination has a fixed demand per units where this entire demand must be received from the source and third is this model has constraints for supply at each source and demand at each destination so the sources for which the structural constraints are built up is not homogeneous meaning that one constraint may relate to machine hours and next one may relate to man, ours, etc. The fourth characteristic is all constraints are equalities in a balanced transportation model where supply is equals to demand. So transportation model will have or will have feasible solution if only if the sum of its supplies equals the sum of its demand. And the fifth characteristic is the constraint contain inequalities in a balanced model where supply is not equal to its demand. It is applied to the problems related to the study of the efficient transportation routes. For example, how efficiency the product from different sources of the production is transported to the different destinations, such as the total transportation cost is minimum. So if you've only got limited resources at your disposal, then it's helpful to calculate you how best to maximize those resources, whether that's time, money, or space. So let's say, for example, you have three delivery trucks and 10 drop-off points. So how do you plan the most efficient route and schedule for these trucks, etc.? So questions like this may seem very complex with so many variables and constraints to take into consideration. Kaya, how do you decide what to do? And the answer is, use linear programming. Linear programming is a mathematical technique that determines the best way to use available resources. Managers use the process to help make decisions about the most efficient use of limited resources. Like what we said earlier, like money, time, materials, and machinery. Note that you can use linear programming only if there is a linear relationship between the variables you're looking at. The relationship is linear if a unit change is one is in one is connected to a constant amount of change in the other. And it is indeed essential in real life decision making by management in order to use to find the optimal way to use limited resources. So when you have a problem that involves a variety of resource constraints, it can generate the best possible solution, whether it's maximizing things like profit or space or minimizing factors like cost and waste. Using this tool is a quick and efficient way to structure the problem and find a solution. And this is the example of the transportation problem. So yeah, yes. We don't understand it right away since the information will be discussed by the next reporter. So question, what is the beneficial and effective methods in transportation problem? Okay guys, we will find it out later. Okay, next is the assignment models. Assignment models, it consists of assigning a specific person or worker to a specific task or job, assuming that there are the number of persons equal to the number of tasks available. And we give color to its definition by stating its various applications in maximizing resources. And it includes allocating the proper number of employees to a machine or task, allocating a machine or a manufacturing plant, and the number of jobs that a given machinery or factory can produce, and assigning a number of salesperson to a given territory or territories. Note that 
Regardless of the resource being allocated or the task to be accomplished, the goal is to assign resources to maximize the profit produced by the task or project. So what is assignment problem? Assignment problem where different jobs are to be assigned to different machines on the basis of the cost of doing those jobs. So its objective is to minimize the total again of doing all jobs on different machines so it become a problem is to each job require different skills and capacity or efficiency of each person with respect to these jobs can be different okay so here's the example of assignment problem velasco has a four machines available for assignment to four tasks any machine can be assigned to any task and each task requires processing by one machine. The time required to set up each machine for the processing of each task is given in the table below. So machine 1 has in a task 1 there is 13, task 2, 4, task 3, 7 and so on. The company wants to minimize the total setup time needed for the processing of all four tasks. This model does not exclusively in machines, reworker relation, but also to projects, certain tasks, or employee. So, question. In this matter, what is the best or more beneficial basic feasible solution for managerial decision making? So, the answer will be find out later. Transshipment model is a multi-phase transport problem in which the flow of material or raw materials and services is interrupted in at least one point between or region and the destination. So many are confused about transshipment problem and transportation problem. That's why I will, I will simply address its difference. So in transshipment problem, it is when you consider the shipment of goods to an intermediate destination before the final destination. Overall, the goods or products in this matter is in transit. Unlike transportation problems, you have supply points and demand points only and you have to ship units directly from point S to point D. So in this matter, in this situation, in this case, or in this problem, no transits allowed. The units are directly shipped from supply to demand point. So now let's proceed to the transportation algorithm. So the transportation algorithm is a linear program, a mathematical model representing linear relationship like transportation between a supplier and a destination or from factory to warehouse. The transportation algorithm uses structure of transportation model to organize the computation in a more convenient form. So, the transportation algorithm does provide insight into the use of theoretical primal dual relationship to achieve a practical end result, that of improving computation. So, in transportation algorithm, we need to find these three important things, which is, number one is the unit shipping cost, which answers the question, how much does it cost to ship each truckload of product? Then number two is the supply. The this answers the questions the number of truckloads each facility can provide. So lastly is the demand. This answers questions the number of truckloads each destination requires. So that is the three important things we need to find for for us to solve the transportation table or the transportation problem so in transportation algorithm its goal is to first is determine a starting basic feasible solution and then use the optimality condition of a simplex method to determine the entering variable from among the all non-basic variables and then if the optimality condition is satisfied, then that's, end. that's the end. However, if it is not yet satisfied, we can use now the feasibility condition of the simplex method to determine the living variable from among all the current basic variables. Mm, that's it for the transportation algorithm. So now let's proceed to developing an initial solution. So 
once we know those three important things which is the unit shipping cost the supply and demand and once we have arranged the data in a table we must establish an initial feasible solution. One systematic approach is known as Northwest Corner Rule. So, in developing an initial solution, we need to exhaust the supply of each row before moving down to the next row and then exhaust the demand requirements of each column before moving down or before moving to the right to the next column and then lastly is check that all supply and demand requirements are met so northwest corner rule a northwest corner rule the largest possible allocation is made to the cell in upper left hand corner of the table followed by allocation to adjacent feasible cells so first step is allocate as much as possible to the selected cell and adjust the associated amount of supply and demand by subtracting the allocated amount <clears throat> next is cross out the row or column with zero supply or demand to indicate that no further assignment can be made in that row or column. Last step is if exactly one row or column is left and crossed out, then stop. So, so the major advantage of this method or rule is its simplicity to use. However, this rule does not consider cost. Thus, it may lead to more er iteration before optimal solution is reached. Since, di ba, ang goal ng company is to minimize the cost and maximize the profit. But then, this rule does, is disregard niya yung, yung unit shipping cost and yung the way na sinosolve yung transportation table is nakabase lang talaga sa northwest corner yung allocation so to further explain it let's go to the example so sa example di ba yung three important thing is is the unit shipping cost ito na yung 317 348 then 957 next is the demand ito then yung supply so so since present na siya sa table now we can proceed to solving the the transportation table using the northwest corner rule so di ba sa northwest corner rule is i-allocate natin yung supply and demand sa northwest corner na box so since ang northwest corner is from scobidal factory to warehouse at kalumpang then i-allocate natin yung yung supply and demand. So, since mas maliit yung supply kaysa sa demand, so, i-allocate natin yung 300 sa sa Scobidal factory at then warehouse at Kalumpang. So, since zero na yung na yung supply, therefore, i-cross out na natin yung Scobidal factory since it implies na wala nang further allocation na pwede i-apply or gawin sa kanya. Then, then after nun, 150 na lang matitira sa warehouse at kulumpang yung demand niya. Then, then, same lang ulit. Hanapin lang natin yung northwest corner na box which is from Tamba Factory to warehouse at kalumpang. Itong 3. 3 din yung ano niya, unit shipping cost. So, 150 yung demand, 200 yung supply. Since mas mababa yung demand, yan yung i-allocate natin sa sa Tamba Factory to where sa Kalumpang and then since zero na yung demand niya therefore i-cross out na natin yung warehouse at Kalumpang since wala nang further allocation na pwede gawin sa kanya and then same lang yung mga naiwan na box na hindi pa na cross out hanapin lang yung northwest corner rule i mean yung northwest corner na box then i-apply i-apply yung yung ano step hanggang hanggang umabot sa sa last na box which is mag maging zero na siya dito sa example is itong 7 tong 300 minus 300 naging zero na siya and yan na yung last na allocation since wala na 
wala nang pwede i-apply sa lahat ng ng sources and destination kasi namit na yung supply and demand kasi itong example is uh, balance transportation table so after nun after ma compute yung I mean, after ma solve yung transportation table now then we can easily compute the cost of shipping assignment through this table from to then unit ship times per unit cost then total cost so ganun lang yung 3 then 300 de ba so from Scobidal factory to warehouse at kalumpang 300 yung unit ship then 3 yung unit per cost then umabot sa 900 yung total cost and then gawin niya lang yan hanggang um, hanggang makuha niyo yung total total overall cost na 4650 So now we can proceed to stepping stone method. So stepping stone method is an very iterative technique for moving from an initial feasible solution to an optimal feasible solution. There are two distinct parts to the process: testing the current solution to determine if improvement is possible, then making ch changes to the current solution to obtain an improved solution this process continue until the optimal solution is reached so stepping stone method works by testing out each query in the transportation table and and see who who is much less lesser cost and then tentatively ship on that less cost route and determine what will be what will happen to the total shipping cost to further explain it here is the example so same lang kanina yung example natin sa northwest corner rule so para makita natin or ma-determine natin kung ano talaga ang kaibahan nila pagdating kung makuha na natin yung result so dito di ba ang rule is hanapin daw natin yung lower cost, lower unit shipping cost. So since dito sa given, one is the is the pi, yung pinakamababa, then diyan natin ni-allocate yung supply and demand. So since mas mababa ang supply, then i-cross out natin yung yung supply dito sa Escobedal factory since it indicates na wala nang further allocation na pwede i-apply sa kanya. Then, after nun, after ma-cross out, then, hanapin ulit natin yung pinakamababang cost among sa natirang mga boxes. So, since 3, yung pinakamababa, dyan ulit natin i-allocate yung supply and demand. So, since mababa yung demand kesa sa supply, then, I-cross out natin tong warehouse at kalumpang since wala nang further allocation na pwede apply sa kanya. So, ganun pa din. Patuloy lang. Hanapin lang natin yung yung pinakamababang route. Ay, I mean, yung pinakamababang unit shipping cost para dun i-apply yung allocation na supply and demand hanggang umabot tayo ng zero or mahanap natin yung pinakalast na box or route na mag-equal to zero. Then, after nun, dito sa example is yung pinakalast na route is itong unit, yung, yung seven yung unit shipping cost. Itong from Velasco factory to warehouse at Apopong. So, so after natin makuha lahat, then i-apply ulit natin siya dun sa table na ginawa natin yung shipping assignment. So, from to Then, you need ship times per cost, then total cost. So, ganun pa din, i-fill lang natin yung table, and then, then kukuhanin natin yung overall total, then which is 4,050. Diba kanina sa Northwest Corner Rule is 4,650. So, it means, using the the less cost solution or less cost method mas makakasave talaga yung company so dito sa example is 600 yung 
600 pesos yung na-save ng company using this less cost solution. Kasi ba diba, sa less cost solution is is sinahanap natin yung pinakabababang cost na route while sa northwest corner is hindi. Kasi doon is simplicity and easy to use lang ang goal doon. While dito, ang, while dito sa less cost solution, ang goal is minimize the cost while maximizing the profit. So now, let's proceed to the special situation with the transportation algorithm. One of it is the unbalanced transportation problems. In this, the total demand is frequently not equal to that total supply. Kasi ba diba, sa, sa real world, minsan naman talaga, ba diba, hindi pantay yung total supply and demand ng isang kampanya or for that facility or warehouse. So, these unbalanced problems can be handled easily introducing dummy sources or dummy destination. So, Basically, dummy sources or dummy destination parang para siyang gagawa ka lang ng fake facility or fake warehouse para doon i-allocate yung ano yung yung unbalanced na supply or demand. If total supply is greater than total demand, a dummy destination or warehouse with the exactly equal to the surplus is created. If total demand is greater than total supply, we introduce a dummy source or factory with a supply equal to the excess of demand over supply. So, now let's apply it to the transportation table. So, here... Since the demand is less than supply, therefore, therefore, gumawa ng dummy warehouse and ito yun, ito 150. Since ba diba, mas mataas yung demand kaysa sa supply ng 150. So, so gumawa ng dummy warehouse, then i-allocate doon yung, yung surplus or excess na, na demand and supply para mabalance. Kasi ba diba, ang purpose ng unbalanced transportation problem is is mahandle ng company easily yung transportation table 'di ba kasi dapat balance yung yung pag mag apply sila ng like northwest corner or less cost rule dapat balance so so kapag unbalanced ina-apply tong unbalanced transportation problem which is yung gagawa ng dummy source or gagawa ng dummy destination So, isa din sa mga special situation is the more than one optimal solution. So, it is possible for a transportation problem to have a multiple optimal solution. This happens when one or more improvement indices zero optimal solution. The alternate optimal solution can be found by shipping the most to this a new square using a stepping stone path. So, basically, sa more than one optimal solution this means that it is possible to design alternative shipping routes with the same total shipping cost so it means kahit na kahit na ano pala yung kahit madami ka palang i-apply ni na rule or method as long as mag claim up sila ng lower cost then pareho sila then that is more than one optimal solution in the real world alternative op optimal solution provide management with greater flexibility in selecting and using resources so next is the unacceptable or prohibited routes so at times there are transportation problem in which one of these sources is unable to ship to one or more destination so when this occurs the problem is said to have an acceptable or prohibited route so sometimes di ba may mga situation na hindi natin pwede daanan yung isang rota sa transportation problem like may problema sa road or may construction pwede din yung baha or traffic na magkos sa pag transport ng restriction or prohibitions so sa so 
So sa transportation problem, hinahandle ito by assigning a very high cost to the prohibited routes to ensure that that kato, yung routes na yun will not be included in the optima solution and then the problem is solved in a in the usual manner. So kasi de ba ang goal ng transportation problem is to minimize the cost and maximize the profit. So, so kung i-assign natin yung prohibited route ng high cost siya, so it means hindi siya isasali when solving the the optimal solution kasi ang optimal solution di ba isang goal is dapat mababa yung yung total ni na overall shipping ano, shipping cost. So, yan ang way kung paano i-handle ang acceptable or prohibited routes. Facility location analysis is a technique for discovering and assessing the optimal placement of an organization's people, information, activities, and materials. It helps the firm to decide where to locate a new factory or warehouse. The new location that yields the minimum cost for the entire system is one that should be chosen. So basically, facility location analysis is a process of determining a geographic site for a firm's operation. It is also a method in transportation that helps identify where to establish location for warehouse or factory at the lowest operating cost. One of the objectives of using this method is to find a location that is accessible for all, customers, suppliers, and employees, and also to assure the security of the public. Managers of both service and manufacturing organization must weigh many factors when assessing the desirability of the site, such as customer proximity, business area, availability of skilled labor, and suppliers. Locating a new factory for Hard Drive Machine Company Hard Drive Machine Company produces computer components at its factories in Cincinnati, Kansas City, Pittsburgh. These factories have not been able to keep up with the demand of four orders at Hargraves, four warehouses in Detroit, Houston, New York, and Los Angeles. As a result, the firm has decided to build a new factory to expand its productive capacity. Two sites are being considered, the shuttle in Washington and Birmingham in Alabama. Both cities are attractive in terms of labor supply, municipal services, and ease of factory financing. Data has been collected for each possible location. So the problem is, which of the locations, in combination with the existing plants and warehouses, will yield the lo lowest cost? So to solve this problem, we will use Excel as our method of solution. So step 1, make a table containing the total unit cost of hard drive machine company by adding the cost to produce one unit and the shipping cost to each location. Together with the unit cost is the factory supply and the warehouse requirement. Next step is make another table by copying the first table you make. Then, move the factory cost to the next column and label it as factory capacity. And also, with the warehouse requirement, move it on the next row, then label the inserted row as warehouse demand. And don't forget to clear the unit cost cells because it is where the final solution will appear. Third step for the solutions in the factory supply is the sum of the first row or each row. Then the warehouse demand is the sum of every column. Then after that, make a cell that is labeled as transportation cost with the formula of equals sum product, unit cost cells, then comma volume cell. Now at this point, to get the final answer, let's go to data and use solver. Let's set the objective as the transportation cost, then minimize by changing the volume cell. To add constraints, we will click the white area, then add the eight constraints. Factory supply should be equal or less than to its capacity, while on the warehouse demand side, it should be equal to the needs. Just do the same for each side and complete encoding the constraints. Change the solving method to sim simplex x, simplex lp, then click solve and ok. And now, 
we, we have our optimal solution, which is the minimum amount that you would enter in making this transportation. Next is the assignment algorithm. An assignment problem is a particular case of transportation problem where the objective is to assign a number of resources to an equal number of activities so as to minimize the total cost or, ma or maximize the total profit allocation. The problem of assignment arises because available resources such as men, machines, and etc. have varying degrees of efficiency for performing different activities. Therefore, cost, profit, or loss of performing the different activities is different. So how assignment is going to be? This is going to be a one-to-one -one assignment, means exactly one person is to be assigned to exactly one job. Though a person can do every kind of job, but you cannot give more than one job to one person. And similarly, you cannot divide the job into halves among more than one person. So that's the meaning of the one-to-one -one assignment is that one person is only for one job. They make use of the skills and ability of a person as well as to minimize the total cost while maximizing the profit. Yes, a person can do a job of others, but the efficiency of the person and its capacity of doing the task is different. Let us solve assignment problem using the Hungarian method. The Hungarian method is an efficient method of finding the optimal solution to an assignment problem without having to make direct comparison of every option. It operates on the principle of matrix reduction. The opportunity cost show the relative penalty associated with assigning any person to a project as opposed to the best assignment. So, the first step in Hungarian method floods technique is find the opportunity cost table. We can compute row opportunity cost and column opportunity cost. What we need is the total opportunity cost. We derive this by taking the row opportunity cost and subtract the smallest number in that column from each number in that column. So for example, in this table, the lowest cost in Adam's row is $6. We will deduct this $6 to each cost in each row. So for example, 11 minus 6, 14 minus 6, and 6 minus 6. That will yield us to the new matrix of $5, $8, and $0. So the same process is done with, Brad, with Brown and Cooper's row. Next is we will find the column opportunity cost table. The, uh, we will find the um, column opportunity cost table by looking uh, or finding the smallest cost or the lowest cost. So the lowest cost in project 1 is 0, 2, and 0. So again, we will deduct 0 to 5, 0 to 0, and 2 minus 0. So that will yield us to another opportunity cost table of 5, 0, 2, 6, 0, 3, and 0, 3, 0. So this is our opportunity cost table. Step 2 for Hungarian method. Test for the optimal assignment. We want to assign workers to projects in a such way that the total labor costs are at a minimum. We would like to have a total assigned opportunity cost of zero. The test to determine if we have reached an optimal solution is simple. We find the minimum number of straight lines necessary to cover all the zeros in the table. If the number of lines equal the number of rows or columns, an optimal solution has been reached. So to test for optimal solution, we will look for the zero cost in Adam's row. As we can see, the zero cost in Adam's row is in a project tree. So we will make a vertical line to cover the zero. Next, for Brown's row, as we can see, we have two zeros. So we will ignore that since the rule only allows one zero each row or column. Next is in Cooper's row, as we can see, there is no zero already because it is covered with zero from Adams. Next, we will find, we'll look for a zero in column or project one. So in project one, 
as we can see, there is an uncovered zero. Uncovered zero. So, we will make a horizontal line to cover it. Next, for the project 2, there is no zero since it is already covered. When we look for zero in, in column 1. So, as you can see, there is no zero already. And to conclude, there is only two lines to cover the zero. So, the solution is not optimal since, since the rule said that if the number of lines is equal to the number of rows or columns, an optimal solution has been reached. Revise the opportunity cost table. We subtract the smallest number not covered by the line from all numbers not covered by a straight line. The same number is added to every number lying at the intersection of any two lines. We then return to step 2 to test this new table. So as you can see, this is the new matrix. So paano siya naging 3, 4, 0, 0, 5, 0, 1, 10? So according to the rule, since the revised opportunity cost table derived by subtracting Two from each cell not covered by a line. So, ang not covered by the line kanina is yung 5 and 6. 5, 6, 2, and 3. So, isubtract daw siya sa 2. So, 5 minus 2 is 3. 6 minus 2, 4. And 2 minus 2, 0. 3 minus 2 is 1. Next is add 2 to the cell at the intersection of the line. So, since yung line kanina is nag-intersect sa, sa 3, then we will add 2 to 3. So it becomes 5. So then, then the other covered lines kanina is we will copy 0, 0, 0. We will just copy it. Then according to the rule, after, after adding and subtracting, we then return to step two to test if this table is optimal or not. So, again, the same process kanina sa paglagay or pag-cover ng line. So, ito, the new matrix. As you can see, there are three covering lines. Since there are three rows and three columns, this requires three lines to cover zero. So, the solution is now optimal. So, in making the final assignment, since we already, since we already defined the optimal solution, we conclude that Adam was assigned to Project 3 with the total cost of $6, Project 2 for Brown with the cost of $10, and Cooper to Project 1 with the cost of $9. In all, the total cost of $25. Therefore, we conclude that the owner of Fix It Shop has already succeeded in its objective to assign the tree project to the workers in a way that he will result to the lowest cost to the shop with $25. Next is the unbalanced assignment problem. Often, the number of people or objects to be assigned does not equal to the number of tasks or clients or machines listed in the columns, and the problem is unbalanced. When this occurs, there are more rows than columns. Sim simply add a dummy column or task. If the number of tasks exceeds the number of people available, we add a dummy row. Since the dummy task or person is non-existent, we, in we enter zeros in each row or column as the cost or time estimate. For example, the fixed shop has another worker available and the shop owner still has the same basic problem of assigning workers to projects. But the problem now needs a dummy column to balance the four workers and the three projects since the rule that if if the balance or kulang yung person or ang project, we need to add a dummy column or a dummy row. So in this case, uh, we need to add a dummy column to balance the problem and put zero as the cost since the person is or the dummy is non-existent. After that, we balance the table or the problem. We can, now we can use the Hungarian method to obtain the optimal solution yourself. The same process will be applied since it has already the difference only is we added the dummy column. 
Next is the maximization assignment problems. There are problems where certain facilities have to be assigned to a number of jobs so as to maximize the overall performance of the assignment such as payoff, profit, or effectiveness. It is easy to obtain an equivalent minimization problem by converting all numbers in the table to opportunity cost. For example, the British Navy wishes to assign four ships to patrol four sectors of the North Sea. Ships are rated for their probable efficiency in each sector. The commander wants to determine patrol assignments, reducing the greatest overall efficiency. So to solve this problem, step 1 is first convert the maximization efficiency table into minimizing opportunity cost table by subtracting each rating from 100, which is the largest rating in the whole table. Next. After getting the new matrix or the new table, step 2 is the smallest number in each row is subtracted from every number in that row, and the smallest number in each column is subtracted from each number in that column. So basically, parang Hungarian method din siya, but yung kaibahan lang is, ang ginagamit is yung maxim, maxim, my, maximum rating. Maximum rating. Then after step 2, the step 3 is the minimum number of lines needed to cover the zeros in the table is 4. So this represents an optimal solution. So the, this third table shows us the uh, making the final assignment. So in conclusion, um, in conclusion, the commander has determined the patrol assignment, the patrol assignment which is Ship 1 is best to assign in Sector D with a efficiency rating of 55. Ship 2 to Sector C with 80 of the efficiency rating. Ship 3 to Sector B with 100 of efficiency rating. Then Ship 4 to Sector A which has 65 of efficiency rating. Then the total efficiency rating or the greatest overall efficiencies among them all is 300.